Hello there! This is my last try at video 7. I have been having a really hard time. It's been very frustrating. It keeps quitting in the middle. So, we'll try this one more time! <sighs> Maybe this will work. So we're going to be working on getting up and down off of our bellies on the mat. Um, we've managed to get up and down from our hands and knees, from standing or sitting. Now we're going to work on getting onto our bellies. The reason why is that almost all practices start you on your feet and want you to end up on your belly for some of the work. And typically in the forward fold, you will go from forward fold to plank and plank to belly. But plank is this, and a lot of beginners just aren't ready to do this, let alone get down onto their bellies. And when I started, it looked like this, which was okay, and I didn't hurt myself. And uh, negative um, work in your arm muscles is still work. So this, as far as you can do it, is still building strength in your arms until you fall down. Ideally, you want to get to a place where you're doing chaturanga. I'm going to do it from my knees, um, but it's meant to be ultimately done from the toes, but chaturanga looks like this, where you stop an inch from the floor. I'm not doing that in perfect form, but I can do it now. So ultimately, we want to be getting down onto the floor. When we're on the floor, we want our hands tucked in low by our ribs, our elbows as close to our ribs as we can get them, and our shoulders back and down as much as we can. Now, that action, all of that is what we're working on, all of that strengthening of the back, and it really helps counteract hours and hours of being on computers and hunched forward. Um, and, but when I started, I think I looked like this. Let's see. My shoulders were rounded. That's as far back as I could get them. I think my elbows were kind of out here. And when I lifted my head, it was like there. But that was my edge, so that was perfect. And now, all these years later, I've developed enough opening and muscle to be able to do this, even this. And ultimately, what we're working on is getting toward up dog, which is a pose in which our legs are straight, our back it is arched backward, and we're supported on our arms and on our feet. Um, but the point of up dog is to arch our backs without crunching the low back. So compressing the low back is part of what gives us pain in the low back. So there are little cushions between our vertebrae. And when we compress our back, we kind of crunch it. And a lot of people, especially if you're doing cobra with arms and you're pushing, you're kind of pushing into crunching your low back. And up dog really needs to be like lengthening, 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 and then curving without crunching into the low back. So letting there be some play between those vertebrae as you expand. And that helps not squish those discs out. That crunching and bending is what makes discs slip. So you want to keep your back in good form and not put it under too much pressure so that you can um, eventually get to up dog if that's where you get and it's okay if you don't. So you can do up dog without ever coming off the floor. Up dog is basically this position. My legs are straight, my toes are pointed. Um, and then up dog is simply straightening the arms from there. Same position. And that arm strength comes later. So if you can work on doing a really healthy, back healthy cobra, where you're lengthening away from your hips rather than crunching into your hips, no weight in the hands, all of this is back muscle, you're doing great yoga without ever doing up dog. So, having said all that, we're gonna play with our, getting our arms strong and getting down onto our bellies. You can do what I did, start in plank and then just go kaplunk, or you can play with different forms. So you can work on, you want your elbows to bend backwards, you don't wanna be doing this kind of thing. That actually invites the shoulders to be up by the ears 
it invites in proper form. So elbows bending straight backwards, it doesn't look like they are, but they are now in straight alignment with my wrists. And um, you can work on keeping your butt in the air and lowering your chin and then sliding out. That definitely doesn't hurt your low back. It might hurt your face <laughs> if you go too far this way and don't have the strength and then you fall on your face. So don't do that. Um, notice where your edge is and then come back and do this if you have to, the worm wiggle. Um, a lot of getting up and down off bellies for beginners looks like that where you leave your hips for the last minute and then kind of hump them up. And if that's the best you can do, that's the best you can do. You're aiming towards better, stronger form, but if you're not there, you're not there. So if you're getting down looks like wormy, then that's what it looks like. Just try to remember to protect that low back because this crunchy can hurt the low back. Um, so tucking your hips under can help protect the low back. So your pelvis is like this and sort of tipping it like that helps invite muscle work that will help not let the back curve as much, the low back. And then working as much as possible to lift the hips up and down um, in a straight line with the shoulders. Harder coming up than down. So work on down first, because that will get your arms strong. And you're doing yoga, and you can play with all kinds of forms. You can play, play with working on strengthening your muscles in all kinds of ways. Just work on movement. All of these things are working on helping your body remember all these ways of moving that you could do easily as a child and that retaining the ability to do these moves helps retain a youthfulness in your body, helps you not get injured so easily. Um, studies have shown that people who do yoga have quicker reflexes and better recovery if we stumble, if we trip, if we slide down the stairs a bit. Um, we're less likely to end up injured because we're keeping these tiny muscle movements and the strength and openness in the joints so that we recover more quickly and we're not as likely to stretch or strain muscles because they're kept in good strength. So whatever you're getting up and down off your belly looks like, do it gently, do it playfully, be kind to yourself. And then Cobra, opening the shoulders. Again, once you're down on your belly, hands by your low ribs, elbows tucked in as tight as you can, which already helps draw your shoulders back and, back and down. Um, and then you lift your head as if there's a string, as if there's a string pulling straight out the top of your head. So it's not going straight up to the ceiling, it's kind of raising like this and with a pulling action that way which also helps not crunch your back so that's what you're imagining as you're working on cobra whatever your cobra looks like whatever your cobra looks like it's good for you and I'm proud of you thanks for showing up for another video and uh, carry on loving your body loving yourself and being kind to yourself and reclaiming some of your youthfulness. Namaste.